Game four, the Mavs trying to close this one out just under 45 seconds to go. Anthony Edwards, he's going to go for the two, puts the Wolves up five. Edwards having himself a nice outing, finishing this one with 27, then ensuing Luka with a four-point play. Getting the foul on this one, but he missed the free throw. Not very Luka-like in this one. Getting the call, getting the three, however, no go on the free throw in that one. Then in the ensuing play, Nas Reed getting the inbound, and that's way too easy. Easy bucket. You cannot let that happen. Minnesota goes up five with just over 11 seconds left in the game. The Wolves go on to win 105-100. Ants 29-10-9 performance. Carl Anthony Towns, a big topic heading into this one was his shooting, especially from three. Not quite having the outings that he's used to. This time around, he was four for five. Didn't attempt his first three-point three shot until the second half. He finished this one with 25 points. Luka, 28, 15, 10. Another triple-double for Luka. Kyrie putting up 16, but it wasn't quite enough. As the Wolves send this one back to Minnesota, and we are heading to game five. We now welcome in CBS Sports NBA analysts and two of the hosts of the Beyond the Arc podcast. We've got Bill Ryder and John Gonzalez joining us. And fellas, we got to start this off by talking about the winning team. Both of you on the Beyond the Arc podcast, both chose, you both picked Minnesota to win this game. Your co host not so much. I'll let you guys get into that. But let's talk about the story. I think one of the struggles that this team dealt with was shooting from the line. 64% from the line. We saw a couple of big misses from Rudy Gobert, but they still managed to pull this out. What did you guys learn about Minnesota in this win? Uh, so for, for me, and, I, and John, I don't want to speak for you, but it just felt like, a regression to the mean kind of game just in a sense minnesota has played really close games in the entirety of this series and it felt like they were just due for a better performance maybe from carl anthony towns check they got that especially a three-point shooting maybe a better performance from the much maligned and i think unfairly rudy gobert check i thought he was fine and anthony edwards was outstanding and more aggressive even if it took him some shots to, to get his points and it, that regression to the mean also works the other way look we're not going to disparage Kyrie Irving. he's been outstanding he just didn't have the same shooting night and really luka Doncic didn't get the same kind of help offensively that he's gotten throughout this series and at, at the end of that game that almost miracle four-point play really kind of summed up the night incredible shot from luka felt like maybe he was going to pull dallas back into this game and then he misses the free throw just in small incremental ways the guy from Minnesota, the stars from Minnesota were better in this game. The players for Dallas weren't quite as good. Dodgers was excellent, but Kyrie just wasn't feeling it. And it just felt to me, John Keanu, like you were going to have a game, a close game, where the Timberwolves were going to get some of those marginal victories, know how to close, find a way to win. We just had a series that got a sweep that shouldn't have been a sweep. The Pacers went down playing tough. It just felt like the basketball gods weren't going to let another close series go down on four when this team, Minnesota, deserved to win maybe one of those first three games and certainly earned it here in game four. Yeah, what a series this has been so far. I mean, the Wolves absolutely should have picked up a game before now. You would have expected it. But they deserve this one especially. This was easily by far their best defensive effort of this series holding the the Dallas Mavericks to only 100 points so that's really how they've played all season is through that defense that finally gets going Ant Edwards just one uh, what one assist shy of a 29 point triple double he looked good and then you asked Keanu what we learned from this game we learned and we've been joking about this on the beyond the arc podcast but we learned that Carl Anthony Towns who's been jacking up 1500 shots per day <laughs> finally paid off he came off his worst shooting performance in game three he was dreadful he went over eight in that game it was his worst in his career from three tonight he looked awesome tonight offensively yes he got into foul trouble and he's a knucklehead with that kind of stuff but they needed all of his offense tonight and between those two guys it's a star based series right when Luca and Kyrie are both shooting the ball well Kyrie didn't shoot the ball very well tonight but when the two of them do they're they're better off than most nights and then tonight Ant and Cat they really got going and what happens they pick up a W on top of playing really good defense so yeah we got a series again yeah John very good point because even going into the half you had 
You had Ant, you had Gobert, and you had Cat all with three fouls. And they were playing fairly cautiously, I'd like to say, with some of their superstars. But, hey, maybe throwing up those 1,500 shots, maybe it was <laughs> cheering game four. I'm just saying, I wasn't there to count the man. But let's go to the other side of thing and talk this thing and talk about Dallas and what happened there. I know a big, I feel like, momentum swing was Luka missing that free throw to make that a four-point play. I feel like this potentially could have been a completely different conversation that we would be having right now should he have made that but what ultimately do you guys think and John I'm gonna come to you first what ultimately cost Dallas the opportunity to close this thing out tonight yeah, that was it. I mean, that was a big, big play. And we saw uh, in the Oklahoma City series as well where the Mavs uh, had some problems from the line. But I think in addition to Luka missing that free throw, Bill and I were talking about it right before we came on air. I thought it was such a huge credit to the Minnesota Timberwolves coaching staff and Mike Inori and Chris Finch that after Luka missed that shot, when Rudy Gobert rebounded it, two things could have happened. They could have just let Rudy Gobert get fouled and put him on the line. But instead, the second thing happened, they, they called a quick timeout, which was absolutely crucial because it saves Rudy Gobert from going to the line. And then they drew up a beautiful ATO play where Kyle Anderson inbounded the ball to Nas Reed, who got an easy bucket going to the rim. And that's the game right there. Luka misses the free throw. The uh, Minnesota Timberwolves coaching staff is on point. And boom, the Wolves finally get a game in the series. Yeah, so someone send that tape to Rick Carlisle, right? Because we're all capable of learning how to improve. And there's a little, John just walked us through a little instructional. And I want to circle back to, to Kyrie Irving because it's not a luxury, but Kyrie has been, for most of this postseason, a, a slow starter. And it's just been a reality that when they have needed him late in games, particularly in fourth quarters, but certainly in the second halves, Kyrie's been there. And it just felt, watching the game, I thought in inevitability, here we go again, Kyrie's going to take over the fourth quarter. He's going to be that spark plug. Luka will make some shots, and Dallas will close his poor Timberwolves team out. And that's just not the way that it went. Now, Luka had a really nice shot with his left hand, which he's done several times throughout this series in the playoffs. The guy is such a scoring machine. But it was Carl Anthony Towns who was the more impressive Robin, who was the more impressive number two co-star. And, and I, look, I don't want to overstate or understate all the other things that happened. I mean, John is right. Defense is the number one reason this Timberwolves team won this game. That coaching situation is a big one. But you have to have your stars, you really do, shine brighter than the other teams. And for the first time, in this, at least in this series, it was the Timberwolves stars, especially Carl Anthony Towns, 25 points on what, 20 and 29 minutes, hitting three after three after three after three in that fourth quarter, Kyrie not being able to do it. That's the kind of things you need from players like Cat. And I don't know if it bodes well in terms of who's going to win the next game, but you certainly got to feel better if you're Minnesota going home and having that guy starting to find his groove. John, you got me? I do. Oh, perfect. All right, just making sure. All right, I, really briefly, guys, I, I know, Bill, you've been covering the NBA for quite a while, and I know you've seen, you know, sometimes what maybe a spark could do for a team potentially. Well, let's just say, I mean, I know not many people probably have the Wolves coming back in this one and taking this to potentially a game seven, but. Bill, do you think that this momentum swing and coming off of what you just said, maybe kind of getting cat that spark, how do you think that plays into game five now they're back at home? Do you think that can have any type of impact in the momentum of that game? You know, and John knows from the podcast, I'm a sucker for optimism and long shots. I was, I was actually talking uh, to a scout today who became an incredulous scout when I was trying to talk him into, I know the Tim Wolves aren't going to win the series, but they can win the series. And I tried to construct an argument. So the answer is, it's going to be really hard to beat the Dallas Mavericks three more times. It it, it just, it just, it, it is. This Dallas team is outstanding for all the reasons that we have celebrated. There's a reason they're up 3-1 in, in this series. But we did see last year a team almost become the first in NBA history to come back down 3-0 in the series. It was in the conference finals on the other side of the bracket when the Celtics almost did it. So, no, I, I don't think this probably leads ultimately to Minnesota being the team that gets it done and, and breaking that mark of no team ever having mounted this kind of a comeback. But momentum's a crazy and strange thing. And while I don't think it's going to happen, I do think if you're Minnesota, you go, I hate the one game at a time cliche that's been thrown at John and I so many times in our years covering this league. But you go back home, you play the kind of defense that Minnesota played. You hope Gobert's got a little more confidence. You, you're, you're encouraged by the fact Cat started to hit some shots, three after three after three. You want Anthony Edwards to be aggressive. John noted almost had a triple-double. Then I think you can go back and you can win that game and at least make life hard on the Mavericks. But, but beating a team as good as Dallas three times in a row, 
that is going to be, I don't want to say an impossibility, because I can remember the Red Sox and the Yankees and magic happens, and that's what makes sports great. There's a, there's a, there's a flicker of hope, and I'd like to tell you that I think it's going to happen. I, I don't, Kiana, but anything is possible, and obviously this is the first step you need if you're going to try to do that. I'm excited that the series is continuing, but yeah, Bill's right. I mean, like the history here is certainly not on the Timberwolves side. For one game, Kiana, maybe going back to Minnesota, this could give them some momentum. But in the history of the NBA, as Bill mentioned, it's never happened that's, uh, that a team has fallen back uh, 3-0 and then come back to win the series. There's been 155 times that a team has gone up 3-0 and 155 times <laughs> that team has won. But that said, the Timberwolves have made a little bit of history here because they're just, uh, the what, the 46th team in history to force a game five and then after that they could be just the 12th team to force a game six and the fifth team to force a game seven so it starts to get really really tough when you're talking about even just getting to a game seven but it would be great because this series has been really fun it's not indicative of the fact that the Mavs are up 3-1 it could be much closer kind of you know not to take anything away from the the Celtics sweeping the Pacers Pacers should have won a couple of games out of that one and certainly the Timberwolves should have done the same thing here. So we'll see what happens going back uh, to Minnesota for game five. But uh, first thing first, right? They won one. That, that's the big order of business. Your backs are against the wall. It's win or you go home. Minnesota decided they don't want to go home just yet. Well, they do want to go home. They want to yeah, go yeah. home and play game <laughs> five in Minnesota at home. John, Bill, appreciate the insight. Thanks for stopping by. And if that wasn't enough, well, then you can get more. Checking out the Beyond the Arc podcast, Bill Ryder and John Gonzalez are joined by their fellow host, Ashley Nicole Moss, breaking down every single storyline from this postseason and beyond. Make sure you download the Beyond the Arc podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, if you thought... Game four in the NBA was thrilling. Wait till you see what happened in overtime between the Panthers and the Rangers. We've got that coming your way next. You are watching CBS Sports HQ.